You're a very interesting poker player since you were blind. 99% blind. Uh, this year, things went really bad. You told me very early when we started our journey together. This is the best thing I've done for sure. You learned me so much that I weren't aware of, so I'm really grateful. This is Steven. Steven is a blind poker player and he got in touch with me because he was facing a big downswing and he wanted to work on some other things as well. Of course, I was interested to understand how a blind person can play poker on such a high level. So we decided to work together. Ten weeks later, Steven got out of the downswing and played some of the best poker he ever played with in his entire life. So we decided to create a client interview for you and talk about his way, his journey and what he overcame in the 10 years of work. So I would say let's jump right into it. Hello, Steven. Thank you uh, for taking the time. And um, yeah, as I said in the intro, um, you're a very interesting poker player since you're blind, which brings me to the first question. Um, a lot of people, when I make that post uh, about you and when they see the title of, of the YouTube video, they think that you're maybe 50% blind or, or you know, uh, not fully blind and uh, that you see the cards or like... Uh, the numbers on the cards or whatever. So can you tell us the story about how you became blind and if you're really 100% blind? Uh, all right, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Karim. So uh, this was a process that started in 2014 where I started losing my eyesight in just one eye. Um, took around six months before I was 99% uh, blind on my right eye. <clears throat> and I still didn't have the name of the disease because it's a very rare disease and my eye doctor told me that um, it's very rarely that's going to happen to my left eye as well so I was pretty calm and uh, I thought that um, yeah um, I was playing poker for a living um, in 2014 and I thought uh, yeah it's no problem playing with fully eyesight on my left eye so I didn't stress about it at all <clears throat> and then it started to happen on my left eye <clears throat> after six months and uh, took around seven months before I got the name of the disease. Uh, it's it's called uh, LHON. It's a very rare disease. Even my eye doctor had to Google uh, what type of disease it was because they haven't heard about it before. Um, so it's a genetic disease uh, which comes from my mom's side. My uncle has the same disease, but when he got it, they didn't have a name for it because uh, yeah, it was 50 years ago or something. He got it. Um, so yeah, when it happened on my left eye, it took uh, around six months more, so around a year in total before I had 1% on both my eyes. So yeah, the, the last six months, uh, those were really tough to, to be honest. But, uh, uh, you know, I would go to the gym like two, twice a week, sprinting four or five days a week. And um, I think that's very healthy when you where you're going through a lot of stress in your life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty proud of how I handle it. I, I didn't get depressed or anything, but um, for sure it was, it was a hard time. Yeah. I remember the one of the first uh, conversations we had, we talked about uh, the football field story, which was a story that really, really catched me. Um, and I think it's also part of, of you becoming blind, right? Uh, yeah, that, that was, um, as I said, I was sprinting. Um, uh, four or five days a week in the on the soccer field and this is something I've done for uh, two three years uh, yeah because uh, I just fell in love with both going to the gym and sprinting and being being active in general so I was really really fast uh, I still sprint on a treadmill but um, I haven't gone out sprinting since I had around 10 percent ISA that was the last time I sprinted on the soccer field and the reason why I haven't sprinted since then is because I ended in an accident on the soccer field when I had 10 percent vision um, I sprinted uh, like I sprint 10 rounds right as fast as I can and I was really fast as well that's why I sprint one time and I walk the back so I sprint the walk sprint walk 10 times uh, and the first set I sprinted and it was like <clears throat> halfway through the soccer field and then I sprinted right into some like stone hedges someone put uh, in the middle of the field. And that was a really painful experience. So uh, yeah, yeah, straight to the hospital. And um, I think uh, that's the first time I actually um, was uh, pretty um, happy that I've been training my abs for uh, some years because <laughs> I think if I didn't have a six pack, I would get really injured. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was really, really bad. But like, uh, um, 
I, I couldn't train legs for like six months because um, yeah, I had um, some injury in my legs for six months. But uh, yeah, it was it could, could have gone much worse than what mm. it did. Yeah, this this is a really really crazy story. If I imagine like running into like a stone or something without seeing, that's that's really painful. I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And yeah, Daniel, now uh, you come into play because also another thing that uh, I heard when I started to work with Steven was um, that you assist him to play better poker. So for me, when, when I heard uh, Steven's story and uh, that, that he's blind, first of all, I thought, okay, if he plays live, you know, he has, he, uh, he has you on your side uh, or on his side and you tell him like, oh, like these are the cards, these are the chips. I think it's very complicated and you have to be very smart yeah, to like play poker like this, but I could imagine it. But then I heard you also play online and also you stream on a regular basis. So then I was like, okay, so how do you do it? And for me also, what's very interesting, um, when you started to, to work with Steven, have you been a poker player before? Um, and uh, yeah, how, how does it look like when you play together? All right. Yeah. So I met Steven like five years ago. And at that time, I thought I knew, you know, the game of poker. Uh, but when he told me that he used to live of poker before he lost his eyesight, I got intrigued and asked him to coach me. And that's how our, our friendship uh, evolved. So he was teaching me uh, by uh, helping him playing online poker. And we just won table. And it was very hectic in the beginning because I, I didn't know the name of the positions or any ranges or anything at all i didn't even know the the hand strength uh, i thought a flush was you know beating a full house for example uh so it took some time in the beginning to actually get comfortable uh also with steven you know going mad on on bluffing as well because i wasn't comfortable with that part uh, but through the last few years uh you know we we managed to up from one table to play uh, live poker at a you know high stakes live poker at some some events before and right now we we stream and we play uh, comfortably at six seven tables tournaments and we've been up to 10 11 tables at some point as well that we just you know in the flow state of you know cruising through the uh, the field um, but this yeah. uh, you know requires some sort of like preparation like we have our own like not not language i would say but like it's just about to give the correct information at the correct time uh, and we, which hand to prioritize because you know he might have six decisions at the same time so we have to use the time bank actively to manage to go through all the uh, all the spots mm -hmm. how, how do you do that how do you prioritize the hands uh, first of all it's uh, the matter of the buy-in like the higher the buy-in the, the more prioritized it gets and then I don't like uh, Steven taught me a lot of poker throughout this year so I'm not a, like I don't play poker that much myself maybe some microstacks now, now and then but uh, I know which spot is easy or difficult that might have to be, this is a good uh, check raise hand as a bluff or something. And then maybe I prioritize that hand over. So he has, uh, Steven has more time to think about the spot. Um, and other than that, I just follow um, the natural, like the, the hand rotation, I guess. But sometimes like the time bank runs maybe 10, 15 seconds in one t tournament before I get the time to, uh, to talk about that spot. Yeah, and uh, I, if you remember, I told, I told you both that you working together as a team could be a big advantage or a big disadvantage, right? Big advantage meaning that like uh, if you communicate the, the right, uh, the, the hand in the right way, um, Stephen can, you know, make a good decision. You prioritize for him, as you just said. So he knows, all right, you know, that's the buy-in. I can make this decision. And you give him maybe extra information that he would not, he would not be aware of. Yeah. But on the other hand, it could also be a disadvantage, right? Let's say you mix up the hands, you you like, uh, you know, you say the wrong chip count or stuff like that. So, it uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, not that often, but it does happen that I miss, say, the, the hand or the suit or the pot or something. Like, it's just bound to happen at some, uh, some spots. But overall, I'm pretty happy with our, like, both our performances when it comes to, like, staying in, in, in a good, uh, you know, focus and manage to communicate back and forth and getting correct information. Uh, yeah, I also have to highlight that, like, I don't 
help Steven on his decisions in the way that like it's only one player per hand. So I'm not allowed to say, for example, that you should do this or whatever. I could just say like the, the facts and he has to uh, decide for himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. But you can also tell him like, hey, you have time bank, you know, like take your time for your decision and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, one, one important question that uh, I also had in mind for you is uh, how, because a lot of questions that I get, right? I get the question of like, often like, okay, how do you keep your focus high, right? But if you play poker, I think it's fine. You know, like there are certain things you can do. You can keep your, your focus high. But for you, you're just like telling this is the hand, these are the chip stacks, you know, it can be a little bit monotone at times. So how can you make sure that you keep your focus high? Because especially you play tournaments. At the end of your session, you make the most amount of money. So if you make a mistake there, it's much more costly than when you make a mistake, you know, at the beginning of the tournament for 100 big blinds uh, and like you're in the big blind and it's like, you know, like someone raises and you say the wrong hand, you accidentally fold and you lose one big blind compared to, you know, being at the final table and, and you make a misclick or something. It's a difficult, answer, a difficult question to answer, but I think it has a lot of, uh, like we've been doing this for five years, so we got, you know, used over time to eliminate certain factors that, you know, can prevent the, the focus to fall out. Like, you know, I turn off my phone, for example, or I don't use my phone, for example, mid-session. I try to just focus. I don't have any other, you know, you know, Twitch or YouTube up on the side or something. I just focus on what's happening right now and I just remove everything else uh, to, you know, proper, uh, you know, get in a correct uh, focus, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coming back to you, Steven. Um, since mm -hmm. you you told me very early when we when we started our journey together that uh, you stream and that your big goal is uh, to involve the stream and like grow a bigger audience. Mm. But can you tell us what is your main goal with streaming and where do you see yourself in the next two, three, four years? Uh, yeah. So as Daniel said, uh, we've been doing this for a while now, and um, streaming has been. Um, uh, a bit over two years, and uh, I remember the, the first stream we had. Then we were playing seven tables, and uh, we figured out that fuck, this is actually impossible <laughs> because we were playing cash game. Then we played six tables, and cash game is very different, mostly because um, we just have hundred big blind spots all the time, and Daniel doesn't have to say the stack sizes all the time because we know it's hundred big blinds and less information, and everything goes so much smoothly when we play cash game so we play seven tables and we're like okay this is not gonna work we have to drop down so then we play like four for a while and then we did up to seven again after like a year and that went uh, much better but still a lot of mistakes uh, so we can say this year we started to play like four or five regularly and uh, yeah it went smoothly but uh, like the longer it took and especially when i started a mindset coach like, like the coaching um my focus is like through the roof to be honest right now it's it's never been this good so now we play 10 tables 11 ta we played 11 tables yesterday and um yeah shockingly i think i've never played that like great poker to be honest like both me and daniel is like in a insanely good flow state when we play 10 11 tables um so i love it and i love streaming and as i said in the beginning the, the goal was to just you know uh, do this for fun try it out and um we didn't have any goal in mind but now since we have grown the stream and we have almost 5,000 followers right now and i think we can actually this, this can go somewhere i think we can we, we have the opportunity to, you know, get sponsored and do this for a living. And uh, like my main goal in two, three years is to do this uh, full time together with Daniel. And um, um, like streaming is one thing, but I also want to travel more together with Daniel because uh, uh, not only is like he's my, my best friend, but also uh, like I have different assistants uh, that I travel to sometimes. But Daniel is like uh, 
way superior from all the other assistants I have. So whenever I travel live, yeah, I want to do it with Daniel, but he works a lot. So my goal in two, three years is just to work really hard, really, really hard and um, try to grow the stream to that point where we can get sponsored. And then we can do this together and li- uh, like uh, play live poker and uh, also do this uh, streaming thing more uh, on the serious side where we like, grow our YouTube channel and social media as well. And, uh, you know, uh, focus full, fully on this. So that's mm. the goal. Yeah. And of course, uh, down below in the uh, description, I have your uh, Twitch account, your Instagram account. And um, yeah, people can jump over and take a look at your stream as well there. Um, let's talk about our work a little bit. You said your focus is very good. So can you tell me why did you, why did you get in touch with me? Why? Did you thought about uh, working with a mindset coach? And uh, yeah, what was the beginning of our work? Uh, Yeah, so I've I've always been um, stubborn. Um, uh, Yeah, for example, when I lost my eyesight, everyone told me you you should go like to a shrink, like you should um, get help, you know, uh, get through this with someone else, not by yourself. And I've always been stubborn and always said, no, nah, I can do it by myself. It's fine. I know what to do. I have a, I have a strong man, mental game like my, um, um, yeah, um, I've always been stubborn. But when it comes to poker, I, th- I think poker is it's such a complicated and difficult game. Uh, not only the game of poker, but, you know, mastering your mental game when things go really bad <laughs> and uh, this year uh, especially two three first months of the year things went really bad uh first time where dan and i have been on a really like actually second time we've been on a downswing the first time it was because i didn't study poker at all to be honest i studied like a lot of cash games and then we transitioned to tournaments and uh, we ended up uh, downswinging but then i started to study tournaments and we went um from a downswing to upswing, but now I do. I did study tournaments a lot this year, but still we were on a downswing, and I felt that my mental game became worse and worse for every session. To be honest, um, but yeah, if you would ask me like before the the the, the, men, the mentoring, if I would uh, have uh, problems with tilting, I would probably say no. But if you would ask me today, I would say yes because I had, I had a lot of problems when it comes to tilting. Uh, a lot of problems that I weren't aware of. Uh, but the reason why I, you know, contacted you is because uh, of the downswing, and I, um, I were more um, unsure how to get out of the downswing. And uh, I was hoping that you had the answers, and uh, for sure you had because all all the all my leaks has been fixed now. I feel like uh, like th- I have uh, done ten weeks together with you, and uh, and I feel like this is for sure the the best um, um, uh, money I've ever spent uh, doing this course. Um, yeah, it's so many things I've learned. Uh, and, um, you know, have, having like a, a structure, that's very, really hard for us poker players to have, to have like a great structure. And, uh, you know, ha- having this structure, uh, me and you created together, that has been um, probably the best change I've ever made. And, um, and uh, yeah, one thing is just, you know, going through all my hands marked before every session, for example, has been uh, probably the best thing I've ever done, you know, fixing so many leaks and having a pre-session routine, uh, like uh, doing the same thing every time before I play poker uh, makes me fall into like a flow state right away whenever we start to play. My my mind is like, okay, okay, it's game time, let's go, right? And um, yeah, the same when it comes to the... Uh, the break routine and the posts routine and um, yeah, doing just the right things. And you, you learned me so much that I weren't aware of. So I'm really grateful. Awesome. Awesome. And this would be also my next question, but I think you already answered it. What was the biggest change? You said discipline, but was there something else that you want to mention? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, having a structure and um, you know, you giving me the right formula for success. Uh, a lot of things that I weren't aware of, of course, like for example, when you get tired, this was a big problem for me. When you play blind, it's going to be a point in your session where your mind is going to be 
you know, unfocused. Um, and um, this was my first question to you, I remember, that what, sh what should I do when I'm seven hours into the session and I can't focus anymore? And then you're like, hmm, when your mind gets uh, get tired, you, you should uh, focus more on your body because the body and mind, they connect. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, that makes sense, actually. Um, so, yeah, I started to, uh, you know, uh, for example, you said jump into a cold shower. For example, try that or um, do some um, some yeah, you know, sprinting on a treadmill, which is a part of my pre-session routine. So I started to do that when I get tired uh, after seven hours and uh, do push-ups, all those things, and it works. It, like this has been the biggest problem for me playing poker blind, and uh, you fixed you fixed it. <laughs> and uh, another thing is like uh, going deep into tournaments. Uh, it's been a problem for me because I'm too much either in the past or in the or in the future. Because I might think like, oh, if I if I just won this pot uh, a half an hour ago, I would I would chip lead the tournament now. I was thinking too much about that, or thinking about pay jumps, thinking about oh fuck, if I if I bluff shove the river now and he calls, then I'm out. Uh, it's a close decision, so I'm just gonna check right all these things. And now I'm just fully in the present. I'm not thinking past. I'm not thinking future. And you know, after you telling me this, it took like two weeks before you like came first place out of twelve hundred people. So yeah, it's been great advice. Sure. Awesome, awesome. What are your next steps with your stream? And do you travel together soon? Um, yeah, when it comes to traveling, we don't have any plans yet because right now we just want to focus on the stream and grow the stream and grow our bank or bankroll. So our plans is to just do what we have done the last couple of months because yeah, it's it's been working out. Like I really love it as well. I feel like I'm like in a monk mode situation where right now where I like drunk don't, don't drink alcohol. I have uh, to-do lists that I follow every day, like meditation, cold shower, uh, sprinting, going to the gym, all those things, and uh, playing poker five days or four days a week with poker and one day with study. Um, and uh, then I have two days where I'm like spending time with my son. And I think this lifestyle is great. And I just want to continue doing what, what we're doing right now. Awesome. Awesome. So last but not least, is there anything you want to share with the audience? Anything you want to say? Any tips you have? Yeah. Get coaching with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for sure. If you have a down swing or if you uh, you know, have, have a bad mental game, for sure. This is the best thing I've done, for sure. Um, and yeah, uh, BlindGuy789 on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's perfect. It. Daniel, anything you want to share? I don't know. Like This has been pretty awesome. I don't have the... Uh, anything special to add to be honest perfect then thank you guys for your time of course all the links are down below in the description um and uh, yeah i hope uh, people check you out and uh, start uh, watching your stream yeah for sure thank you <laughs>